the number 10 best team that didn't win the Super Bowl, the 1983 Washington Redskins. The dominance of that football team, the high scoring team in football. Then goes the diesel for a touchdown. Certainly doesn't get mentioned as much as it should when you talk about great football teams. Touchdown, Washington Redskins. They were a really fun team to watch. Here comes the fun bunch in the end zone. But greatness was robbed from them. They lost by four touchdowns in the only game that matters. Our number 10 team finished 14 and 2, rolling through defenses for a then record 541 points. The 83 Redskins were a team that had that feeling of a dynasty. They had won the Super Bowl the year before. The Washington Redskins have an NFL championship. As far as talent goes, I think it was, you know, the best team I've been a part of. All right, let's go to work now. You just had so much talent on that squad. Don't forget about all the great hogs. <laughs> Joe Theismann was at his peak. Touchdown, Washington Redskins! Down, baby! You betcha! John Riggins closing his career down, but he was still a bruising rusher. Touchdown, John Riggins! Break up that visa! Um, um, um. But the most impressive record set that season was a plus 43 turnover differential. People get all excited. Ooh, we're plus 20. Ooh, that's nothing. They're winning games in a way that was almost like cheating. Picked off. He's gone. It's 28, Daryl Green. When you're plus 43, you are two turnovers better from the word go than your opponents. Go to the Super Bowl! If there's anything better than this, I hope it happens in two weeks. You just don't know. In a one-game situation, anything could happen. Welcome to Super Bowl 18. A monumental mistake before halftime cost Washington a place in history and landed them at number 10 on our list. If you could say a Super Bowl was decided by one play, that might be the Super Bowl you'd point at. Here comes the Redskins with 12 seconds to go in the half. Trailing 14 to 3. Rocket screen. Theismann looks off to the left. Intercepted. Jack Squirrel. Touchdown Raiders. Joe Gibbs says he could describe the path from being a genius to being an idiot in two words, rocket screen. They looked like they knew it was coming. That was the single most back-breaking play in modern franchise history. I cannot believe the Redskins would do that. Everything that could go wrong for the Redskins went wrong. Everything that went well for the Raiders, I don't think they could have planned. It just happened. He has to reverse his field, but he, and he gets away from him. That was one of the most stunning losses in the fashion in which it happened. An utter and complete blowout. The Raiders dominating this Washington Redskin team. That pretty well tells the story. What kind of day it's been for Joe Theismann. If we had won that Super Bowl, they'd consider us the greatest team in the history of football. I don't want to hear about them being one of the greatest teams of all time. They lost 38-9 to in the Super Bowl. End of discussion. The number nine best team that didn't win the Super Bowl, the 1979 Houston Oilers. That was a team that's probably underappreciated because they didn't win the Super Bowl. It's as simple as that. Who couldn't love those Oilers? You know, Pastorini's their quarterback. Pastorini laid it right where it should be. The coach wears a cowboy hat, and they got this big, mean bowling ball of a running back in Earl Campbell. Giving the ball to their main man, number 34, Earl Campbell. They don't need to be on this list. They had a great running back and a coach that liked to chew dip and wear a cowboy hat. That's about where it ends. In 1979, plaid pants and feathered hats were all the rage. But in Houston, it was the Love You Blue Oilers that had fans in a frenzy. Oilers of, the, of that era were a fun, entertaining team to watch. 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Earl Campbell. I, I know their defense was one of the best in the NFL. Way back at the 30-yard line. This place has erupted. He had Bum Phillips standing on the sidelines looking like a refugee from the Grand Ole Opry. They might as well run it. Yeah. Let's run the Bum Rooski. Huh? Run the Bum Rooski. You wanted to see Bum Phillips coach on the game's grandest stage. Now you can't do that. Oh, come on! And we were denied that. Bum Phillips, best hat to never get into the Super Bowl. Perhaps the best buzz cut to never get into the Super Bowl. That ain't funny. 
that was probably the best chance that that Bum Phillips team ever had to win a world championship. Bum's bunch was a gutsy and resourceful group that nearly fought its way into a Super Bowl. The Oilers are rising to the occasion today. They were able to go to San Diego and overcome Air Coriel when they were 22-point underdogs. They will be in the AFC championship game again. I said before the game we were short on manpower, but we were long on guts, and I'm damn sure right. The feeling going into that AFC Championship game was Pittsburgh, Houston, whichever team wins this game is going to win the Super Bowl. It was a tough call that may have prevented our number nine team from taking down the tougher Steelers. Renfro, touchdown, or is it? The Houston version of it is, if the play had been called correctly and Renfro had been given the touchdown, that the Oilers would have won the game. Deep down inside, we felt like we were robbed. That's a little simplistic. You know, the Oilers fumbled four times. He fumbles, Pittsburgh ball at the Houston 49. And Earl Campbell had 15 yards rushing on 17 attempts. Frustrating day for Earl Campbell. He just can't get himself at full speed. That Oiler team was a really good team for a long time. They just had the misfortune of being really good at a time when the Steelers were maybe the best team ever. The Pittsburgh Steelers are the champions of the National Football League for the fourth time. Their history kind of gets pushed aside a little bit unfairly because the franchise moved to Tennessee. It was a great team. They ran into a great Steelers team. They gave them a good run in 79, but that's about it. They don't need to be on this list. The number eight best team that didn't win the Super Bowl, the 1984 Miami Dolphins. I'm glad they lost. I'm glad they didn't get there. They beat me too many damn times. There was a buzz around the 1984 Dolphins that this was the new team for the 80s, the hot young quarterback who was going to redefine the position. There's Marina off, wide open field, throws for a touchdown, and there's the record. Ridiculous numbers, 48 touchdowns. Marina was unstoppable. They didn't want to run the football, they wanted to throw it downfield, and we love that offense. If it wasn't for a guy like Dan Marino throwing it for 18 trillion yards, this team would be in the Canadian Football League. Does anybody play for Miami other than number 13? Dan Marino had numbers 83 and 85, Mark Clayton and Mark Duper, and led the Dolphins to a 14 and 2 mark. He may go, Duper scores. We was on fire. I think the DBs spent a lot of time, no sleep before the game when they come to play the Miami Dolphins with the Marks brothers there. This is a team that routinely won games 44 to 7, 31 to 7. This is a team that coasted through the AFC playoffs. Here's a deep pattern. It is tipped. Oh, touchdown. Yeah, this team is ranked a little bit too low. The 84 Dolphins were one of the great offenses ever, but I don't think you would remember them as one of the great teams of all time. Looking back on it, you really wonder how effective the Dolphins would have been had they had a great running back as a compliment. They don't go for the pass, they try to run it, and they did not make it in. Prior to the 1984 season, former Dolphin first round running back David Overstreet passed away. David Overstreet was a good all around back, powerful runner, and he had great speed, quickness, agility. Overstreet around the left side, gets the corner, still digging, goes in. That guy would have had a great career in the National Football League. Dolphins are number one. We got B fans. The Dolphins had the killer bees, but they were starting to lose their sting. Defensively, they were average to be kind. And even in the two playoff games that they had, David Craig and Mark Malone were the two quarterbacks. And they almost passed for 600 yards between them. Perfectly thrown by Dave Craig. If they were having trouble with David Craig and Mark Malone, you can only imagine what was going to happen with Joe Montana and the 49ers. And it kind of did. In Super Bowl 19, the 49ers exploited our number 18's flaws. Everybody went into that game talking Dan Marino and the 49ers were like, hey, what about our team? Back to pass, Montana fires. It's caught there by Craig, goes in for a touchdown. It was Roger Craig who really killed us that day, and we had no answer for him. It was simply a game where we were overmatched. The handoff given to Craig. Craig batters his way to the goal line. Touchdown. Yeah. Aimed to see an offense, and the wrong one showed up. Dan Marino, who never got sacked, spent half that game on his back. He was looking for where that next hit was coming every time he took a snap. Dolphins have been less than super this afternoon. The 49ers have been very super. It was a heck of a football team, but they just lost to one of the better teams ever. 
eight is probably about the right number. Uh, the 49ers were clearly a better football team that year. Whoever's voting on that uh, list of top ten should have their heads examined. Number eight, uh, we should be number one because we did have a great offense and we did have a great team. We should have won that Super Bowl that year. We just didn't do it. I'd love to have that notch on my belt, but it didn't happen and we have to live with that. The number seven best team that didn't win the Super Bowl. The 1986 Cleveland Browns. The 86 Cleveland Browns, a great team. Do it our way, one play at a time. The Browns were minutes away from going to the Super Bowl. And it didn't happen. It was awful. This was a team that had that strong, iconic following. This team had players that people in Cleveland felt they could relate to. Bernie Kosar, the son of Cleveland Browns football. And everybody jumped on board. Everybody had 19 jerseys. An unbelievable throw by Kosar. Ernest Biner and Kevin Mack, two great running backs. Browns are averaging six yards per carry. The 1986 Browns were not a great team. They didn't have a 1,000-yard rusher. They didn't have a 1,000-yard receiver. They didn't have anybody with 10 sacks. Come on now. They went 12 and 4, had the great win against the, the Jets in, in double overtime. Snap and sit down, and the game is history. Cleveland wins it. And you're thinking, this is their year. Let's look at it this way. They lost to a Broncos team that went on to get hammered in the Super Bowl. How good could they have been? In the AFC Championship, before 80,000 howling fans, the pandemonium palace that was Cleveland Stadium rocked with cries of a Super Bowl. They thought that this football team was going to win, go to the Super Bowl, and hopefully get a, a Super Bowl ring. There's a gleam. Get him. Let's get the gleam, all right? Let's go. go it appeared the Browns would find their Super Bowl gleam late in the fourth quarter. Yeah. They take the lead 20 to 13, they kick off. Denver fumbles away on the two yard line. A big mistake by the Denver Broncos. So they've got to go 98 yards, okay, to just tie the game. We are the At that point, Browns fans finally felt we're going to the Super Bowl. The Browns thinking about Pasadena. And then as each play happened, got a little bit quieter. And then he drops back and he throws that slant for the touchdown. You could hear a pin drop in that stadium. It was about as gloomy as I've ever seen it in this town. People were just shocked. Why did Marty go to the prevent defense? Why didn't they rush more? And in that drive, which was 98 yards, he was hitting wide open players. Why are you giving Elway all that time to, to scramble around and, and throw the football? Well, that's where John Elway can do it on his own. Bring the house. Get after him. The game shouldn't even have been close in 86. We had spent five days in Florida. I wanted to stay back and practice because the ball's different. You get used to the warm. I think we wasted a half and, and weren't as sharp as we needed to be. And Kozar is throwing for it. He's got a receiver wide open and drops the ball in the end zone. You had the Super Bowl within your grasp, and Elway took that away, or Marty Schottenheimer took that away from him. The number six best team that didn't win the Super Bowl, the 2001 St. Louis Rams. I think that team's right where it should be on the list, number six. I'm sure there are five other teams that are deserving to be where they are on this list. Way too low. Way too low. I cannot believe that. A vastly superior Rams team. It's our game. Going against the lowly Patriots that had to get there in the snowball and the tuck rule. After reviewing the play, it is oh, run. They sneak in. The Rams had won the Super Bowl two years earlier. Wait, what? Woo they had Fox. Superman wears a two and eight on his chest. They had Warner, the greatest show on turf. Warner takes, throws the end zone, touchdown Rams. And the Patriots win? That's got to be higher. It's ridiculous. I'm going to try to blow him out of the state. Our number six team set a franchise record for wins in 2001 with 14. When they got going, they were lethal. I don't know how you tried to play them, uh, how you tried to slow them down. And the Rams are just going right up and down the football field. That was a defensive coordinator's nightmare. And the Rams are pouring it on. And we ain't gonna stop. 
They were 14 and 2 in the regular season and amazingly were 8 0 on the road. It ain't nothing like coming into somebody else's place and taking it over. The Rams beat the Patriots in Foxborough that season. Hurt. Straight back, unloads the Marshall inside the five, driving for the end zone. Yep. Touchdown, Rams! Mike Mart said after that game that this was a Super Bowl team, it was the best team that we played to that point. I thought Belichick figured it out when he played him during the regular season. It was like a trial balloon. How am I going to play these guys if I get them again? The Patriots coach found our number six team's Achilles heel. Bill Belichick in that game beat Mike Martz psychologically. He understood that Mike Martz would want to throw the football. Give the football to Marshall Falk once in a while, Mike. He's not going to because Mike wants to win throwing the football. We're the best center right now. Mike Martz has been kicked and whatever body parts you want to talk about. But of course, the Patriots went in, and they were just going to beat up the Rams. Hit him. He was jarred on a big hit. Uh-oh. Hit him. Here comes a bump and run. Hit him. Hit his ass. Hit him. Well, the Rams' offense has never really gotten in rhythm. Let's beat the hell out of his receivers and backs and try and screw up the timing that way. As we will be successful and all game long. Hindsight, we now realize how good the Patriots were about to become. That particular day, everybody thought the Rams were going to win anyway. One, two, three, win. The Patriots just had no business being on the same field as the St. Louis Rams. They weak, man. The Rams were supposed to show up. They overrated. And it was supposed to be a coronation. Tom Brady, overrated. And it was supposed to be 50 points. We're going to get our props, man. And the Patriots were supposed to just be happy to be there. I said I was going to get you there! Yeah! In the fourth quarter, we had this sense of, wow, the greatest show on turf is actually going to lose the Super Bowl. What a stutter here in Super Bowl 36. No one saw that coming. Many people think that Rams team in 01 was better than the one in 99. And quite frankly, I think that's a misagreement. The Rams head off the football field with their heads down. It was a team that was striving to be a dynasty. The Rams were so cognizant of the import of that particular game to their legacy. Tonight, a dynasty is born, baby. They were a once-in-a-generation type team, and I think that they needed that win to solidify their place. And now, the number five best team that didn't win the Super Bowl, the 1981 San Diego Chargers. Give me the top five. Are you getting me? That one should be a bit higher. That was the year they probably, if not won the Super Bowl, at least should have got there. Bring on the rest of the NFL. They have to be on this list. They, they are one of my favorite teams of all time. Break two more tackles. Touchdown, Chargers! You guys are just making another mistake. I, mean, I don't think it's a great team. Are they top five area? Maybe. But they're certainly top ten. The Chargers' Eric Coriel offense reached new heights in 1981 as quarterback Dan Fouts set a new NFL record with more than 4,800 yards passing and 33 touchdowns. Teams were traditional then. I mean, you ran the football. You did all the fundamental things. The Chargers just attacked you. Great catch! Touchdown, Chargers! It changed the way the game is played. Bounce the quarterback, fires up downfield, a touchdown! It was all timing and reads by the receivers, reads by the quarterback. Very difficult to defend. Is, is that what you wanted, a yeah, touchdown? Want. Taking a tight end in Kellen Winslow and using him in ways that had never been done before. Into the end zone, Winslow, touchdown! Good job, Kellen. Way to fight in there for me, babe. I'm not sure if these guys belong. This is a list of the top 10 teams, not the top 10 great offenses. San Diego made our list despite allowing 24 points per game and ranking last in pass defense. The defense was terrible. The pass defense was atrocious. Horton has thrown three touchdown passes, and we're still in the first quarter. That's a team that you excuse their lack of defense because of their brilliant offense. If they'd had any type of defense, we'd be talking about the Chargers as one of the great teams we've ever seen in NFL history. After a 10 and 6 finish, our number five team's biggest playoff obstacle was Mother Nature. I'm curious to know how much the heat can affect San Diego. You think about that playoff run. They go to Miami and play into overtime, and everyone's exhausted. And the Chargers move on to the AFC Championship game. And a week later, where do they go? They essentially go to the South Pole. The temperature in greater Cincinnati has dropped to 9 below. We're talking a wind-chilled 59 degrees below zero. No one is comfortable when it's 59 below. That's one of the drawbacks if you have that type of offense, that if you get into bad weather, 
it might not work out for you. We were so focused on staying warm, you know, survival, and uh, maybe didn't play up to the level that we could have. I did have trouble uh, throwing a spiral that day because of the cold and the wind. And the wind appeared to take that one. I was amazed at how easily Kenny Anderson threw tight spirals. You can always look back at Cincinnati and go, what if, what if, what if. They're not only feeling the cold, they're feeling the pain of that score on the scoreboard. That wasn't really the 1981 Chargers. That was a team that had been neutered by the weather. The number four best team that didn't win the Super Bowl, the 1998 Minnesota Vikings. Four. Really? The 98 Vikings? The Mamby Pamby indoor glorified arena ball team? No, 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 no. That's the dumbest I've ever heard. They're that notable for choking so badly. They didn't even make the Super Bowl and they make the stupid list. Some people say we didn't deserve it. Whatever. <laughs> you. We deserved it. That might be arguably the biggest mystic ring. I mean, that team should have gotten the Super Bowl and they probably should have won it. Prior to that, only two teams had gone 15 and won it, and those are two teams that are teams for the ages, the 85 Bears, the 84 49ers. It looked on paper and on the field like one of the great teams in league history, but they don't end the season at the conference championship game. It's like getting punched in the gut. That's a team that you always look at and you go, Man, I really wonder what could have happened because they were just loaded. Playing the Minnesota Vikings is a track meet. That Minnesota offense, I think, was the best in NFL history. When you have Robert Smith, who's a good running back, a versatile guy. Touchdown, Vikings! Randall Cunningham having an MVP-type season. Cunningham by Ayers, what a catch! Chris Carter doesn't drop passes. You've got the recipe for, quite frankly, to be very, very good. Talk about the big plays the Vikings are known for in 98. Our number four team's big play offense scored 556 points thanks to a rookie who caught an NFL record 17 touchdowns. The Minnesota Vikings have selected wide receiver Randy Moss. was this weapon that you thought was destined to win the Vikings a couple Super Bowl rings, not just one. Sure, the 1998 Vikings were good, but for some people, not good enough for our countdown. The 98 Vikings were not even the best team that year. They played a very easy schedule. They had an average defense, and with the exception of Gary Anderson, they had average special teams. That's good, Gary. Good job. It's not that much of a shock that they didn't make it to the Super Bowl. It's so glad you can hear the season drop. They absolutely have to be on this list. How many teams go 15-1? and one? And if Anderson kicks a field goal, a chippy, they go to the Super Bowl. They'll go wins it. They have an opportunity to put this game out of reach. That's one of those ultimate jinxes. This guy's never missed. Anderson is connected on 46 consecutive field goals. He's not going to miss this kick. There's absolutely no way he can miss this kick. It missed wide to the left. Unbelievable. And it was, oh, I can't believe he just missed that kick. Gary Anderson has missed for the first time in two years. People got to stop blaming the kicker for everything. It's not the kicker's fault. The defense didn't stop Chris Chandler when they had to. Intercepted by Robert Griffith. The Vikings let that opportunity slip away. We'll take a knee. We'll take a knee. They're going to run out the clock and hope for a nice overtime. Denny Green going conservative. The fans seem puzzled as to why they didn't try at least one more play. And the Vikings have never completely recovered from that game. The number three best team that didn't win the Super Bowl, the 1990 Buffalo Bills. <laughs> That's the best team in the history of professional sports never to win a championship. Our number three team's lack of a title can be summed up with the two most painful words in Buffalo's history. Wide right, wide right, wide right, wide right. That stuff never goes away. It's like body odor. To live there is to hear that on a, almost a daily basis. Wide right, wide right, wide right, wide right, wide right. This is a team that is forever thinking wide right and waking up from nightmares of wide right. I missed a, a big opportunity today. They don't even let him have buffalo wings. Norwood's doomed forever. He should become a monk. 1990, you kind of got a feeling early in the season that this was going to be their year. They found something that other teams couldn't defend. In the no-huddle offense, Kelly to throw again. And it is hot! 
The NFL was left flat-footed by Buffalo's K-Gun offense. And I know the Raiders can poo-poo this no-huddle offense, but they've never seen it the way the Bills run it. They just set an offensive pace that made it very hard for defenses to play against. And they had the personnel to make it work. Jim Kelly was a real forceful leader. Stick with him. We're going to get him. We're going to get him. And they had Thurman Thomas, who was a very versatile running back. Thurman Thomas, touchdown! They had Andre Reed running the underneath slants. Andre Reed scores! And then you had James Lofton stretching the field. James Lofton breaks another big play for the Bills! That K gun offense was good for a long, long time, but the Giants somehow found kind of the antidote to that. This is the Super Bowl, and it's the Giants against the Bills. Norwood's miss was the slamming door on the Bills' Super Bowl prison sentence, but Buffalo had plenty of other reasons for coming up short. Parcells said the only way we could win is control that clock, and he did. Jim Kelly is watching helplessly at the sideline. At the end of the game, you look up, and the Buffalo Bills have only had the ball for 19 minutes. That is truly incredible, that time of possession. That's the one Super Bowl that the Bills lose sleep over. They were better than the Giants. They played 10 times, they would have won seven or eight times. That one play to Mark Ingram. Third and about 13. Helped buy them time, and they play keep away. He's got Ingram for maybe a first down. Yes, he's got it. But the Bills' defense weren't the only ones to blame for the loss. I think the rest of the players on that Buffalo offense have some responsibility for the defeat as well. I don't think Jim Kelly did a real good job on that drive. That is a long way to kick a football. Go back and look at the clock when the Bills run their last play. Kelly may spike the ball here. You're telling me that Jim Kelly can't run a play that is going to take four or five or six seconds and the clock is stopped. Make it happen! Make it happen! I've never seen a team more stricken by a loss. It was a heartbreaking way to lose it. That loss to the Giants really ratcheted up the pressure on that team. Why do we deserve to, to, you know, to lose the way we did today? I think if they had gotten that monkey off their back the first time, we might be looking back at the early 90s as a period when we saw the greatest team of all time. The number two best team that didn't win the Super Bowl, the 68 Baltimore Colts. People remember the 68 Colts only for how it ended for them. The New York Jets are the world champions. They have upset the Baltimore Colts. What's kind of lost in all that is what a dominating team they were during that season. Well, that night has made too many forget that between July and January, the Colts recorded an historic season of football. This is one of those teams that you compare to some of the Lombardi Packers teams. What the hell's going on out here? While nobody will mistake the 68 Colts for Lombardi's Packers, it is amazing they were even in the conversation. It was a team that was in, uh, in, in disarray at the beginning of the season because John Unitas had gotten hurt. Instead of Unitas, the man leading the Colts was Earl Morrow, a gypsy quarterback who had worked without distinction for four other teams before coming to Baltimore. Earl had no clue, numbering system the wrong way. We're going this way, yeah. We're going left. Okay, 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 okay. you're going to left. He went from a guy that was just a veteran journeyman backup to most valuable player in the league that year. Morrill's accurate passing put points on the scoreboard. And that is all Coach Dom Shula needed because nobody scored much against the Colts. They had the best defense in the last 10 years in the NFL. Baltimore's defense just took the ball away from Cap. He only gave up 144 points all season. Baltimore posted three regular season shutouts and a fourth in the NFL championship game. In the NFL championship game, they beat Cleveland 34 to nothing, and it could have been worse. And it's been a very gloomy, gloomy Sunday in Cleveland, but in that great city of Baltimore, ain't a beer cold. I don't think they looked at the Jets in Namath and said they can beat us. It was just so hard for NFL people to envision that game being very close. NFL people were right. The game wasn't close, but it was the NFL team that was manhandled. Everything that could go wrong did go wrong for us. It was a, a, a day from hell. This game is over. The New York Jets are the world champions in a stunning upset. 
the way they performed in Super Bowl III, I think, caused a lot of people to think, maybe they really weren't that good after all. They almost shut out the Colts today. If they were as good as what they said they were, they should have came out and beat the shit out of us. They weren't overrated. They were overconfident. You know, the Colts that game in the first 31 minutes had four turnovers. There was that flea flicker where Jimmy Orr is, he's wide open, he's waving for the ball. They had Jimmy Orr all alone and they didn't see. They should have won that game going away. The loss in Super Bowl III was so devastating, Baltimore carried the burden into Super Bowl V, where not even a world championship could console the Colts. And the Baltimore Colts have won the Super Bowl. To this very day, no January rolls around that I'm not forced to relive Super Bowl III. Joe running off the field, waving that single digit, we're number one. That never goes away. And now, the number one best team that didn't win the Super Bowl, the 2007 New England Patriots. When you think of all the teams who were supposed to come away with that ring, the 2007 Patriots were the team. There may be a new America's team. Of course they should be number one. You go into a game 18-0. That's an incredible thing. Nobody does that. There's no team that's close to being as dominant as a team that goes 18-0 and and then loses by a field goal in the final game. 18 and one. <laughs> the 2007 Patriots were, in a word, dominant. And the Patriots machine is in high gear. Tom Brady sets a record for touchdown passes in a season. Touchdown pass number 50, an NFL record. Randy Moss sets a record for touchdown catches in a season. Touchdown reception number 23, an NFL record. It was like playing Madden NFL football, and you're playing an all-pro, and the computer's playing on rookie level. That's impressive. They actually were the team of excellence that was also kind of the, the, the team villain all season long because of Spygate. A lot of national media people questioning the validity of the Patriots Super Bowl championships. Try to see what team y'all working for. Y'all working for the Pats or y'all working for the NFL? Nothing rallies a football team more than the idea that everybody's out to get us. With their legacy in question, our number one team responded with the most effective type of rebuke, winning. A bullet to Randy Moss. The Patriots just took it to him tonight. Things got bigger. The Patriots will go home at 3-0. And, and bigger. The Patriots are 5-0. And, and as they kept winning, it got more and more unbelievable. And the Patriots remain undefeated. How do you feel about being 9-0 going into the bye week? Oh! There had to be something in the back of their heads. Once they got the 12, 13, 14. It'd be a great feat for the team. It'd be, be great to go down as the only team to be 16 and 0. We are not finished, fellas. We can go 19 and 0 and be the first team in history to do that. And the Patriots are 18 and 0. Super Bowl, here we come. The bubble's got to burst at some point but it can't burst in the Super Bowl, can it? The Patriots bubble not only burst, it blew up in Super Bowl 42. Looks left, lobs it left, first is wide open, touchdown Giants! The New York Giants have knocked off the New England Patriots, 17-14. They will always be known as the team that went into the Super Bowl at 18-0, and didn't finish it off. The Patriots will not be perfect. You can never convince me that going 18-0 didn't hurt them in the playoffs in the Super Bowl. That's a pile of garbage. It absolutely weighted them down. The expectations, the Super Bowl hype, they went for it. Good for them. And you do have to remember that they came within two minutes of winning the Super Bowl. Fires, touchdown! Randy Moss! And the Patriots regain the lead! And when you look at that game, they're a missed pick. But Sante Samuel went high in the air to try to intercept it. A third down conversion. Gonna be sacked! No, no, he got out of it! Now he fires downfield! A helmet catch. And it is caught! How in the world did he do that? From winning that Super Bowl. And there's no evidence whatsoever, none, that in the striving that the Patriots cost themselves. Every bit of luck turned against them in the fourth quarter of that game against the Giants. That's why they're not number one on the list of all-time great teams, and they end up being the number one team on the list of teams that never won the Super Bowl.